episode number 56, the longest running Stadia podcast this side of Google Maps. You're joining myself, Chris, alongside my lovely co-host to my left, your right, your right, my left, the techie teacher himself, Mr. Tom. You're breathtaking. How are we all doing, everyone? Thank you very much for tuning into this episode again. And how are you doing, Chris? I'm doing uh, wonderful. It's been a, it's been a crazy week, and uh, I'm looking forward to getting into it all. Uh, but before we do that, below your your mighty self, we have the uh, man of many pixels, guitars on the wall, feeling a little bit better, Mr. Richie. Yeah, all I can say is I'm still alive. Still alive. <laughs> That's good. If if we went yes, live, and there, I would be very impressed if a corpse managed so, yeah. to get on. Get on Discord, <laughs> headphones on, <laughs> clothed a at least. A skeleton. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm um, actually a zombie. I mean, it is Halloween. Stranger things have happened. Uh, if you are new to the show, ladies and gentlemen, this is, like I said, a weekly gaming podcast where we round up all the Stadia stories and the gaming news for your listening con- or viewing content pleasure, depending on uh, what format you wish to view us in or listen to us in, in fact. Uh, <laughs> if you are new, we do appreciate a like down below and a subscribe to the channel. It keeps you in the loop all things Sounds of Stadia, such as our uh, Let's Play series that runs every Saturday with myself playing Monster Boy and the Curse Kingdom. And uh, again, I'll give you a weekly recap of what uh, happened this week if you've not checked it out yet. I forgot to save my progress, or the game did not save my progress, <laughs> and I went back a week uh, to do a whole boss fight over again, and it was painful and probably delightful at the same time for the viewing audience. So, lessons learned. Practicing. Lessons practicing. learned, kids. Always save your That's work. You get a kick out. Whether it's Microsoft Word or it's a game. Or it's something in life. Always save your work best you can. Uh, we also followed up, Tom. Um, we we donned our baking chef's hats this past Thursday. Uh, and thanks to our wonderful friends over at Court Sync and High Tea Frog Games, we were able to play Cake Bash. Um, crazy Gato Royale, as they, they were there. We had many, many cake puns. Um, what was your takeaway from that, Tom? Your dessert takeaway from playing Cake Bash this past Thursday? Uh, it's left me with a real sweet tooth, Chris. I really enjoyed it. It was it was a lot, a lot of fun. Absolute blast that game was. Um, just everything from like the little the little niche touches they added to the mini games. The mini games themselves were just incredible. And you know, we had a great, great involvement from the community as well. We had a bunch of people jumping in with us. And uh, yeah, we had we had some really good times. Yeah, it was so. It's just it's it was just crazy fun. It was very similar yeah. in a similar vein too, like get packed and uh, I don't want to say most battle royales, but just just wacky crazy fun with party s- games like party, Mario yeah party. Mario yeah, Party yeah, Crash Crash Bash. Mm-hmm. You mentioned it was very similar yeah. to uh, yeah, loads of little mini games added I sprinkles. Feel yeah, I feel it's going to be one of them staple games that we're just occasionally going to pull out the pantry on the first of the evening. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We certainly are. Check, check the bacon. Um, there's like crazy stuff happens. Like you get attacked by a pigeon. There's a uh, fork knife was one of our favorite ones where essentially <laughs> the cake gets like attacked by multiple forks and you've got to survive to be the last the last cake standing. I guess. Um, but yeah, just wacky, crazy fun. Plenty of puns. So if you've not checked that out, head over to uh, our YouTube channel um, for the video. It's up now, and yeah, we had a, a, a crazy time with it. Loads of fun. We'll no doubt be playing that again. Um, but. That brings it up for a quick, sharp, snappy housekeeping, gentlemen, because this week, it's been, like you said, Tom, one breathtaking week for Stadia News. What a time to be a Stadia fan. Um, but before we do get into that, we should probably address, Richie, do you want to give us the, the quick retcon ritual before we do get into the bulk of the news? Because <laughs> I listened to last week's episode back, and there must be a good 10 plus accounts where we uh, we may have a slight dig or a joke towards the, the first stop topic of the week. Do you want to give us well, a run? A lot of our um, criticisms, I think, uh, were fair last week. They were. However, last week. <laughs> yeah, the last. However, that is very much last week. Although I think the big we can get into it when we get to the news section. But basically, we were shitting all over the cyberpunk release date last week. Yeah. Yeah. What are you gonna do? Yeah, I think there's about ten yeah. times, especially you and me, Tom. We we threw a few jokes around of going. When's it coming? When's it coming? Um, but anyway, busy week, as we mentioned. Thank you, everyone, for stopping by. And here we go, Tom, with... The Super Sexy Special Stadia Story segment, a.k.a. The, the news. news! And what a news week it is, Tom. It's a cracker. And Richie. <laughs> a crazy, crazy news week. And if you've not seen it already, um, we got the mighty, mighty special reveal as part of cyberpunk's night uh, night city wire reveal i think it was episode four this past week um yes they basically they, they come out and give you kind of like a brief showcase it's it's hosted by holly bennett i believe uh, fellow brit 
Uh, and she basically talks through things. But yeah, surprise tease at the beginning of the 20 or so minute video. And then at the end, jump back to Stadia. Very, very proud uh, to announce that it is coming day in day, ladies and gentlemen, to Google Stadia, <laughs> November 19th. No downloads, no updates. CD Projekt Red, biggest follow-up game to The Witcher 3. And we can play just like that in all its glory. Is it day in date or day and date? I don't know. Day in date? Both I also thought day and date. Basically, long story short, it's coming out at 8 a.m. Pacific time on the 19th of November. There you go. So that's like our yeah. traditional, what, 5, 4 o'clock slot? Give uh, it's about 4, 4 yeah. p.m. Yes, 4 p.m. drop. But gentlemen, we've been we're seeing getting it. it. We're getting it. What a Woo! what a time to be a Stadia fan. And the the way the narrative switches on social media already is is yeah. crazy, right? Like I know obviously all the Stadia fans are going mental for this kind of stuff, but just because of how crazy it really is that where we've been begging for it, we've been criticizing them for it, we've been saying who needs to do the work to get this done? Is it the Stadia team? Is it CD Projekt Red with all of their crunch going on and everything and obviously they've been working on this game for like six seven years and we were only ever told by the end of 2020 but they've done it it is going to be here by the end of 2020 and more importantly the 19th of November now I'll I'll, I'll go through I want to go through everybody's individual journeys with this news rolling out because I was driving uh, back from work and I think Tom you put in our our chat group like it's happening and shit's happening it's it's real yeah oh yeah go to twitter and everything's popping up because obviously we didn't expect this because it happened within the cyberpunk nightwire Nightwire episode it wasn't part of a blog it wasn't the stadia account it was very much just baked into the the global nightwire video that goes out to everybody um my my personal take on it is it's given me a very difficult dilemma so if you rewind a few episodes back my dilemma was when this game comes out on other platforms what do i do do i wait to play it on Stadia when we finally get a date, or do I just bite the bullet, buy it on my P- PS4, and and just play it and enjoy it and be part of the narrative and the story that everyone's going to be no doubt reviewing and talking about? It's going to be all over social media, gifs, memes, reviews, everything like that. All the excitement that comes with a new game launch. And my concern was, do I wait to play it on Stadia? Do I buy? That was my dilemma. My dilemma now, gentlemen, is I have a PlayStation Five coming on the nineteenth of November. <laughs> Do I just leave it in its box and play this on Stadia? Because my hype levels, the yesterday, um, went, or Friday, sorry, <sighs> went through the roof. Thinking like, like all of a sudden I was like tuned in with it. I was checking videos out. I watched the Nightwire video fully back. The cars, the engines, the world, Night City. And the fact that I can play it on the go, on my phone, and like the, the convenience that Stadia's offered me, I just can't wait. I'm, I'm, my hype levels went... Whew through the roof on this so i'll swing it over to uh, uh tom next for your for your take on this one before we go to mm. richie um what's your take on all this breaking news as such so i think it's incredible first of all like i'm i'm so hyped now for the game actually coming to stadia like we it, it's always been one of the defining titles for me to get me into the platform and you know originally back when they announced uh stadia was coming out we, we you know we were told by the time it comes out cyberpunk is going to be coming as soon as it as soon as it lands it will be on stadia that was what back in april mm, yeah. i want to say sometime in april um delays happened and then we were just told end of the year end of the year we heard that narrative repeated again and again and again end of the year and hashtag we joked about coming it soon. yeah hashtag coming soon right um, we we kept joking about it. We just kept like thinking, oh yeah, but when's it going to be? Is it going to be even out before twenty seventy seven actually lands? Right? Um, wow, <laughs> what a surprise that it is actually. You know, um, albeit through the crunch and so on, they're going to hit November nineteenth. That shifts the narrative for Stadia in such a massive way because we talked about like how long are you willing to wait for a game before you actually jump into it cyberpunk is probably going to be the first definitive title that sort of like explodes onto the next gen platforms it was sort of also the only game that i was really interested in getting next gen so from my perspective i'm now not interested in ordering a ps5 or a series x at this point like, I was always going to put it off anyway, um, because nothing that was coming out bar Cyberpunk really had my attention, like, had me sort of fixated on it. But now I know it is coming to Stadia, and it is coming on the 19th. 
I don't care. Like I can wait. I can wait a couple of years if I need to for PS5. Like I don't need to. I just want to be straight in on my phone, literally as I go wherever I want, playing Cyberpunk because I cannot wait to eat this shit up. I'm so excited for it now. So 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 excited. How about you, Richie? Um, my hype level's weird because I think it's been again that's just been in the narrative for so long <laughs> it's almost been over marketed in my opinion i didn't watch the most recent night um night city wire because i'm sick of them trying to sell this game to me that i've already well i have pre-ordered it now um i was just waiting to be able to pre-order it it's like you don't need to keep selling me this just get, just tell me when it's coming that's all the only information i needed is when it's coming to stadia to make my purchasing decision and where it's going to be whether it's going to be PS4 mm. Stadia. Yeah. That I mean, was the only last thing, and we finally got it. So I think I might now start feeling a bit more hyped as we get towards yeah. that November 19th date. I, I think you're right, Richie. Now we know, like, I, my, like again, my hype level, it, it flipped on a coin. As, as soon as I knew it was coming and I could make that yeah. informed decision to get it day, day and date, or day in date, with every everybody else, I wasn't going to have to look at my friends playing it in my, on my PlayStation friends list and be like, Oh man, I could just if I order this now, I could have it yeah. immediately. Like not well, not instantly, but I could have it fairly yeah. soon and play it along with my friends and be part of the narrative. Now I get to do that on the go, anywhere, no downloads, yeah. instant. Like we're going to be playing this way, way quicker than anybody else because just like the Baldur's Gate drop last week, it's instant. And the fact that it's yeah. such a huge game and we don't have to worry about updates every other like couple of I... weeks or months is huge. I'd argue Cyberpunk is the biggest game that's coming out this year. Yes, There's other great it games. Is. Most of the other great games have been single platform. Yeah. That's Where what I was saying with yeah, cross platform. With with next gen, it is going to be the launch title for next generation at this point. Yeah. Like it is going to be the game that everybody will be, you know, will be very critical of and looking at very deeply. I think it's also worth saying at this point, because we haven't really touched on it, the exposure for Stadia that they get from being um directly addressed in a night city wire like in the it wasn't cyberpunk in a, in a stupid reddit thread or nope. blog post that no it was they addressed it prominent like straight up on screen and the, yeah it was prominent and there for people who are not interested not necessarily just people interested in stadia people interested in that game yes mm-hmm. yeah yes. it's third party yeah. it's huge it's going to be everywhere yeah. and i think you're right tom they addressed it at the beginning of the video we've got something for stadia and then at the end of the video it's coming 19th of November, and again, this this is where we can see the, the narrative start to change for things like downloads and updates, because like with Baldur's Gate, the more people, you mentioned last week, a couple of YouTubers who were waiting for the download and then got in and played it, people can be streaming this immediately on Stadia, and I think as that future future generation of convenience rolls out, I think this is going to be huge, because like I said, it's going to be a massive, massive title, um, it's going to be probably very evergreen, similar to The Witcher Three, if it's as half as successful. People will play this for years to come, and from the scope of it, what I've seen from all these Nightwire videos, it looks like it's going to consume people's lives. They're going to live and breathe Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven, um, yeah. and and I just can't wait to jump in. And my hype levels, Richie, but I think you saying there now you've pre ordered it, they can start to rise. I was interested in it, but like you, I've wavered over the last couple of months because realistically, we could have been playing this for like half a year at this point. Yeah, and probably done and moved on. Maybe, yeah, yeah. Oh, we could have keep going back to it. But you know what it is? This game is going to be a huge part of the zeitgeist for winter. Mm, okay. okay. I mean it's everywhere. We should also yeah. mention though that next gen they haven't confirmed the date for it yet. So everyone playing on Series X and uh, PS5, it will be the backwards compatibility of the um yeah. what's the Xbox one called? Why am I blanking uh, on Smart Delivery. Smart Delivery, yeah. It'll be yes. that version of the game, and then CD Projekt Red are inevitably going to kind of probably repackage and relaunch on the next-gen consoles. But the great thing with us and Stadia is we just always have the ne- the best version that CD Projekt Red put out. Obviously, it may not be me... next-gen yeah. specific, but... <clears throat> the best version that can be on Stadia. Exactly, yeah. And uh, that was going to lead me to another point then, which is trying to be a little bit like, look at this more through a, like less of a rose-tinted lens and a little bit more critical of it is what what version do we get graphically um i've heard whisperings that it might be around about like if you take take the pc version it's probably going to be about the mid to high setting rather than mm-hmm. ultra high i'm Which absolutely fine with that for a yeah, games I'm console absolutely fine with that like looking at the video footage and the gameplay i've seen so far i'm actually super excited based on just what i've seen visually 
that's fine. Like I'm I'm happy to take mid to high. It yeah. doesn't have to have everything bells and whistles, ray tracing yeah. and so on. It, it, but... If you want things like all the bells and whistles, ultra high graphics, ray tracing, buy a PC. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> buy a gaming PC. Yeah, if, if, yeah. if that's your concern, you will invest yeah. the money to play the optimum performance levels yeah. capable. If, it, like most people, you don't have that sort of cash or that technical prowess or something to set up a gaming rig PC, Stadia. Grab a Chromecast Ultra if you want to yeah. play on your TV, or play yeah. it on your old crappy old Chromebook, the, and it will run the, to the best you can get visually. The bigger question for me will be: Is this going to be effectively the PS4 version or the PS5 version of the game? I think PS4 Pro. I think Xbox. that's going to be. Yeah, I think it's probably going to be that PS4 Pro mm -hmm. bracket, the Xbox okay. Series X bracket, not the next gen. Yeah. Unless we've got some news potentially come next well, week. Well, yeah, we've got those stories. But we, Stadia at the moment, in terms of the technology and how games run, they run absolutely fine, but there's been nothing to kind of like up, the, up to the next level. Like, nothing feels next-gen yet. Yeah, they're currently above PS4 and Xbox, but they're not. As we know about all the tech specs and stuff, but yeah. do, do most people care? I, again, I feel like I'm in this camp where games have looked stunning for this entire generation to yeah. me. Like, you look at some of the launch games oh. we got, like Kills on Shadowfall for PS4. Yes, it's not the best game story and playable wise, but it looks stunning to this day. Infamous Second yeah. Son, The Order 1886, I went back and played um, at the beginning of lockdown, actually. And that game looks m more beautiful than yeah, half the games that have came out in the last game. couple of <laughs> years. So. We're at the point now where everything I've seen is cyberpunk. I am not going to look at probably one element in that game and think, "Oh, this looks a bit, this looks a bit PS2 era." And like, you're not going to get that. It's going to look stunningly visual, no matter where or how you play it. And yeah, I've um, said before yeah, as well, um, the big like graphical market thing at the moment is 4K 60. I think 60, yeah, is definitely you should be hitting 60 frames per second at least. 4K, I think, is massively overrated at the moment. I don't, I don't know how many people actually have 4K screens in their house. Mm. I think it's all, it's mostly down to the frame rate and the refresh yeah. rates of of things rather than the actual yeah uh, overall amount of pixel representation on a screen. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm happy 1080p HD. Just you know, yeah, knock it up to 1440p if we need to. We know we've got that on PC um, in browser, but I'm I'm cool with that. Exactly. But to wrap this all up in a nice little cyberbore. Um, Thank you, Stadia and CD Project Red. You're yeah. breathtaking. You've done it. You've made it happen. Yeah. And I think, like yeah. you said, Richie, the narrative now going into winter is hugely positive for Stadia. Will we yeah. see Cyberpunk on competition like Luna? Who knows? We'll have to wait and see. But this, I think, is a massive, massive... If they can get the marketing right with this game, it could be huge. Yeah. If they really, really double down on pushing Cyberpunk, play now, play anywhere, play on all the existing tech you've got, Forget buying the expensive console. Again, Tom, you've just mentioned there, pre-orders for PS5 getting pushed back. Yeah. This is another massive thing. If you want to play arguably the biggest third-party game of the year, you can do it for less than probably 100 quid. I want to see Stadia posters and the end of bus stops in the UK. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, there's no point because no one's allowed outside anyway. That's true. <laughs> um, what I've said before is Stadia in the gaming industry has become a bit of a meme. And the main focus for me in Stadia needs to be moving away from that so it just becomes another normal part of gaming like oh yeah i play on ps4 I play on xbox i play on stadia just yeah that's where they need to be focusing and getting to but yeah and this definitely helps us 100 percent. it does and like you said richie does. play wherever makes you the most happy yeah. and if that place is a hell of a lot cheaper than another console box and a hell of a lot more convenient then you're in the right place uh <laughs> yeah. next up um we thought I thought this was going to be the biggest news story of the week, this next story. But hidden comes CD Projekt Red with all their Witcher magic and just throw it, blow it all out of the water. Do um, the steampunk dicks around. <laughs> is it steampunk? I don't think so, no. That, that it's, could it's be it. Cyberpunk. It's <laughs> yeah, just cyberpunk. cyberpunk. Uh, oh, so many neon clothes are going to be bought yep. uh, this, for this Christmas. Uh, but next up, um, our, our lovely friends and Stadia's best friends, arguably, over at, um, over at Ubisoft just dropped another ton of games on us prior to next week's announcements, which we're also going to get into. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we got a, a bevy of games dropping on Stadia. Uh, they didn't give us quite dates, but we've got some exciting titles that I've, I've for one, played to the max. Um, so first up on the list, um, 
we had uh, the original Watch Dogs game, so we know we're getting Watch Dogs Legion. Uh, imminently, it's actually probably 11 days from the time of recording that we'll be able to get our hands on uh, that Ubisoft world of London, the post-Brexit lockdown everything. But why not delve back into Chicago with one Aidan Pierce, the... Uh, miserable bastard that was the protagonist from, from game number one um, you really don't like him do you no no i do like him he fits in the character and the narrative of, of that city and that world but he's just he's just got so much shit over the years for being broody and dark and the game maybe people i think expected a bit more grand theft auto humor because it's that open world type of game mm. and it is ubisoft but um it just rains all the time in chicago it's the windy city for a reason so it kind of fits the narrative it's all dark um, the underground hacker world. But first up, we're getting Watch Dogs um, original, OG Watch Dogs. Uh, I'd either interest you, this one, how, how do you sit with this game and then Legion? So would you be interested to go and play this one first or start with Legion's work your way back or I, is, is this gone um, too far? So I'm, I'm sort of glad that Ubisoft is sort of bringing this this collection and we'll touch on it a little bit more in a moment of, of their back catalogue game, should we say, um, bringing it to Stadia. I do, however, feel like I don't have enough time to get Watch Dogs in before Legion, so I do sort of kind of wish this had come a little bit sooner. Mm. Richard, yeah, I'm in only, it's my, my only where... negative take. I, it's my only negative take on it. My only, I'm not particularly that interested in Legion right now, purely because of time constraints. I'm not going to have enough time to play all the games I want to play, and unfortunately something had to drop out and Watch Dogs Legion is the one I'm least interested in of the key games that I'm looking forward to. Yeah, I'm, I'm the same there. With with Valhalla on the horizon as well, and now Cyberpunk, it is it is just finding that time within an adult life <laughs> to, to actually enjoy them and play them. And again, Watch Dogs 1 is a, a great game for what it is. Um, they also follow that up with uh, Watch Dogs 2. So with uh, Marcus Holloway, I think the protagonist Marcus in that Holloway. is, like I said, yeah. we, we touched on it a little bit last week. A lot more fun, a lot more vibrant, a lot more colourful and, and more in vain of uh, what Legion seems to be. Uh, however, it does have one character, whereas in Legion we know you get to play as everybody. So you get to fly down the sunny streets of San Francisco with this one. Um, if I was to recommend someone who was maybe pushed for time, I would probably say start at the second one. Um, with it just being a lot more in tune with what I think Legion is going for in terms of that style and that look. It was a better rounded game. Um, but yeah, we're getting them both. It is a shame that we're not getting them prior to Legion coming out, unfortunately. So then people yeah. would have had time to maybe try them out and get a taste for it. Richie? Although, I don't, I'm kind of looking at them thinking, could these be pro games for November? Ooh, that would be pretty big. Which, not which one, though? Be both of them. I mm. think either would work quite nicely as their pro game especially with Legion coming out, but the timing, I think, would have, with Watch Dogs um, Legion coming out on the 29th of October, yeah. it would have made more sense for them to be a pro game for this month. Yeah. Yes. I think that would have been like, just as you've had a full month to play Watch Dogs 1 or 2, yeah. the newest entry is now available second last day of the month. Yeah, that would have maybe, well. maybe they just weren't ready. Um, and, oh, I don't know. But it just feels like, especially Watch Dogs 1, because it's a bit, quite a bit of all of the title. Do you, do you remember when it came out? Um, the original was 2014, so my guess would this be like 2017-ish, yeah. give or yeah, take. 16, and then 16, 17, probably. So it, it, there's probably no real loss to Ubisoft by making, oh, you know what, you can have this as a, as a pro as a pro game for maybe November or December. Yeah. And if anything, it might entice people into t buying two or, um, or Legion. Yeah, uh, but again, yeah. more more titles and more importantly, qu quality titles coming from Ubisoft. They are they are doing absolute wonders yeah. over there for Stadia and, and fleshing that yeah. library out, which I think definitely gets us on to a talking point we'll touch on once we've gone through the full list. Because this isn't all, yeah. uh, everybody. We're we're getting more. If you are a big fan of the Assassin's Creed franchise and everything that came with uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, you'll also be thrilled to know they are delving back into the Templar and Assassin catalogue and they're digging more titles out for us. Um, they are, We'll start off in chronological order. They're giving us Assassin's Creed Unity um, from yeah. way, way back when. <laughs> now, again, Assassin's Creed Unity, I think, was a very underrated game. It got a lot of shit at the time, rightly so because it was buggy um, for some people. I just want to say that I played through this full game to completion. No real issues. There was a few, like, typical game things but nothing that broke the game in any way shape or form for me um yeah. 
Well, this is the point that I actually completely give up on the Assassin's Creed franchise for a while because I played through um, two, the tri- 2 trilogy, which was awesome. Mm-hmm. 3 was just boring, so I kind of skipped 4. I was looking into getting back into Assassin's Creed with Unity, and I was a PC gamer at the time. Yeah. And every single review I read was, it's a broken mess, don't play it. Mm. And it, feel, it felt like, it was at the time when like Ubisoft were making it, it was an annual franchise, mm-hmm. I always felt rushed to market. And it was like, I tell you what, maybe once you fix the game, I might consider buying it. Yeah, it's it, the one thing with the Assassin's Creed games that always gets me is, is being a big, um, like big fan of history. I did history in yeah. uh, school and college and stuff, and it was really nice to. I think it's always the location, necessarily more than the characters. Um, yeah. Like revolutionary France, and the next game we're going to get to as well. They're set in distinct times of our human history that stand out for specific reasons, and they delve in with characters from uh, those eras. I mean, everyone loves uh, Da Vinci in the in the OG ones, right? Playing, yeah. seeing him and his wacky, crazy machines and everything, and uh, how it ties in with the narrative of the story in Renaissance Italy. It does the same thing with this. You're around the French Revolution. You meet people like Napoleon. Uh, Paris is beautifully realised. If we remember when the Notre Dame fires happened uh, last year, they used the Unity engine and the sc- the scans they'd done of Notre Dame Cathedral to help uh, with the restoration work. So it's just it's it's so beautifully lived. It's it's even even if you're not a fan of the game, I'd say it's worth it just to explore Paris. If you've ever been or have wanted to go to Paris, um, it's great for that. Um, not, not as a game, just, just I mean, walk Paris, Paris has changed a, quite oh, yeah. a bit since the 1700s. Yes, yeah, but... don't get me wrong. Yeah, it's not quite as, as scruffy as uh, it's made out with like shit in the streets and everything. Yeah. Uh, beheadings going on with a guillotine left, right, and center. Oh, that still happens. No, that still happens. Weirdly enough, totally off topic. Did you know Christopher Lee was present at the last guillotine beheading in Paris? He was alive and present. That's, that's a crazy fact. That is. So rest in peace, wow. Christopher Lee. Obviously, we lost him last year again, I think. But that fact was so crazy up until like now. Just Christopher Lee of Count Dooku and Saruman fame was alive and present at the last guillotine beheading in France. And That's when you nice. check it, it only happened in like the 1930s, 40s. So it's actually not that crazy. Of a st- I mean, crazy that we were beheading people still at that time. But we weren't. We we personally weren't. Yeah, we weren't around. But uh, yeah, anyway, viva la resistance, <laughs> as they say. <laughs> and uh, that moves us on to our neck of the woods. Uh, Ubisoft have gone full circle now because they're also giving us Assassin's Creed Syndicate, um, which took place in Victorian London uh, with two protagonists. The first game to give us two protagonists at the same time. Um, obviously, Legion's returning to post-Brexit London. Which of those worlds I'd rather live in right now? It's It's dubious. <laughs> Um, but gentlemen, uh, did either of you have a chance to check out Richie? I think you checked out of the franchise completely at this point. But Tom, what, you got any yeah, history with Syndicate? No, not at all. Um, wow. I'm actually really excited for. Quite frankly, like I'm just gonna I'm I'm just gonna skip ahead a little bit here, Chris. To be honest with you, but um, we're talking about Ubisoft bringing a huge AAA library to Stadia. Like, yes, okay, they're older titles, but they are, without a doubt, it's they are AAA franchises. Oh yeah. Um, I'm not 100% sure how far back I'm going to delve into, but there is one Assassin's Creed title that is yet to be mentioned oh, I that I definitely, definitely <clears throat> will be playing because I want to play um, essentially what's been dubbed as like the Assassin's Creed trilogy mm. of, yeah. of the, the older world, shall we say, like even it further feels back like than... So the say the origin. It was like, almost like a soft reboot of the franchise. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, we'll just get into it, Tom. Let's let's talk yeah. about it because you're totally yeah. right. It's the reimagined reboot of the Assassin's Creed franchise. They took some time off. They came back with almost a Witcher-inspired open-world RPG style, and I, for one, loved Assassin's Creed Origins to absolute pieces. And mm. then the follow-up to that, Odyssey, was another sublime game as well. And we've talked about it. We've done a full Let's Play series on the channel. Go check that out. And I think I and I knew as well, Tom, with the Norse impact as well. Uh, so excited for Valhalla. Yeah. It's beyond belief, especially with them coming out this week with a six-hour gameplay walkthrough and showing you the hometown, the hub world, and some of the, the tweaks they've made to it, but more so than leading into the mythology. And this is where it started for me, with ancient Egypt talking again about history, uh, I don't know about you, Tom, but I know me and Richie did a lot of like Egyptian history back in like you're talking like primary absolutely. school stuff. Yeah, absolutely, it's so fun. Everyone loves the mummy. You remember Brendan Fraser? 
Remember that that wacky, crazy uh, movie. I remember Brendan Fraser. I do not remember Tom Cruise. Do you remember <laughs> the Scorpion oh. King? Oh, the Scorpion King. Oh, yeah. Shout out to Dwayne Johnson. Wow, that was what, probably one of his first. Actual yeah, it will have been. Yeah, did, it, it might have been the first one he like starred at. Yeah. Are you talking the Scorpion King spin-off movie? Or are you talking his terrible CGI cameo at the end of uh, uh, the Mummy Returns? Um, the the spin-off. Spin-off um, movie. It wasn't that yeah. bad actually, as far as like a, a rock movie goes. It. Or back then, what yeah. a rock movie was. It was just yeah, like daft action comedy fun really. Um, but back to uh, AC Origins, of course, Tom. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would recommend if if you don't have the time. I know I recommended. Uh, probably syndicate and that above all and the watchdog games but i'd say of the full list that we've gotten if you enjoyed odyssey and you've not somehow played origins yet yeah jumping at the start it starts well before assassins and templars were really established because we're way back in ancient egypt yeah. you've got julius caesar cleopatra anubis warriors if you do the, the dlc highly recommended some of the funnest dlc i've played in many many years you're talking giant scorpions, Anubis warriors, and in the Valley of the, the Kings, it's, yeah, mwah, chef's kiss for that. It's it's absolutely like the Assassin's Creed title that I never got around to playing, and I still do not own on any platform, so Ubisoft have done, me, you done me a solid here. I'm definitely going to be picking it up on Stadia, so that's at least one purchase they've got there out of someone. Cha-ching! Lovely. Um, Richie, I know I know you kind of waver back and forth with Odyssey and, and things like that. Does Origins interest you, or are you just thinking this um, isn't the franchise just... for you at this point? All three of these games kind of interest me because I I skipped on Unity and Syndic Syndicate for technical reasons, so I am intrigued to go back and play through their stories. But it's more of a time. I don't know when I'm going to have time to play these with new games coming out as well. Yeah, and they are so by like, no means. While short I'm glad games. they're there, I don't know when I'll play. I'm just running. Sorry, for audio listeners, Chris is just waving all his games. I have them all. I saw <laughs> yeah. I saw Lloyd from Stadia Cast do it. Just show up and like showcase all the ones you've got. And I know we don't have physical media with Stadia, oh, but hold that seal back book battle. That one. Yeah, that's beautiful. It's the uh, that's Spartan, really nice. the Spartan, cover. yeah, Spartan case yeah. for uh, for Odyssey. Um, because yeah, like I, this is one of my favorite franchises of all time, and I honestly think they've gone from strength to strength with the Origins reboot. And as someone who's attempted to play through The Witcher several times, and the time consumption for some reason, Assassin's Creed just clicks with me. And yeah, I must have over a hundred hours in Origins, hundred and twenty plus hours. Then Odyssey, I played through twice. So interestingly, it was Origins that got me interested in the franchise again, mm. and that's why I actually bought um, mm. what do you call it? Odyssey on on playstation 4 because i kept hearing so much great things about origins and then odyssey came out and was like "Ooh, uh, which one do i buy first i think i might have asked you chris which one do i go for first and you yeah. you went odyssey's so i went that's what i went with yeah it's the then i didn't initially like it yeah but they're fantastic fantastic games <clears throat> and uh it just fleshes out this library of like you said tom triple a titles these are yes they're all the yeah. games but people still play them, and like back to my graphical argument, all, like Origins looks gorgeous, like a sunbaked desert with um, all the kind of the the bronze statues and stuff, the the Sphinx cat and everything like that. It's the, in the the like the sand dynamics and stuff. Everything just looks stunning, like in modern games. I have no arguments whatsoever from from the graphic I like fidelity of any. The anyway. idea of having like the complete. Um, franchise on the platform as well. Yeah, it's yeah. nice when that happens. Give Which us... We're not quite there. We've still got, uh, well, four games. Yeah, we've we got need, more Yeah, we need actually. that like, remastered sort of trilogy, essentially yeah. the, the, the OG games, just to top it off. Just Which... Three, four, and one. Yeah, and again, one. this this kind of harks back to... We've not oh, got Black it as a, as a topic, but yeah, Black Flag's a shame they didn't go that little bit further yeah. back, but if we're going to yeah, talk about yeah. all of these games, surely this is just kind of a, a, a sign, a beacon to suggest that like, Uplay is getting ever closer. Uplay Plus subscription. Yeah. I mean, we haven't even touched on the fact that they're bringing bloody Far Cry games to Stadia. Yeah. Well, we know we've got six, but we're getting we're getting five as well. We're getting New Dawn too, and they are, <laughs> again, they are excellent AAA titles. Granted, I've I've not played, um, I haven't played them since four. Far Cry Four was the last one I played. Um, yeah, I, I again, am I am I am I getting with these franchises? I... They're only going back so far, maybe. These right. are the games that you can just buy directly and the others will be on Uplay Plus. Yeah, it's an interesting one because 
They're not. They're not even that old. It's so weird when you look at some of them. Um, Far Cry New Dawn is only like two years old, if that. Ubisoft are the kings of releasing consistent content year after year. Like they, yeah. they sometimes they're not a detriment. Yes, I don't think there is a single publisher out there that has successfully managed what Ubisoft does, which is literally like Assassin's Creed one year the next year well, like consistently like well, that i think I know since that unity had... syndicate yeah. days they've learned the lessons in terms of yes. just pushing everything out to market just to hit these arbitrary deadlines folks are making good games but they've got a large network of studios oh yeah they span the globe with with their studios all over the world but the for, for me again what tom mentioned there the, the quality that comes out in them like and yeah. if there is something cookie cutter about it don't get me wrong like the far cry games they don't really differ that much you have an asshole protagonist uh, antagonist yeah. sorry and you've got a, a, a kind of voiceless main character and you just kind of there go from an asshole. you do yeah they're always always an asshole, <laughs> asshole. you just kind of go yeah. from outpost clear the area get the collectibles do a wacky side mission um Far Cry Five in particular oh, lets you team up with some bears and wolves. I think you have a you have a giant grizzly bear called Cheeseburger. Just to throw in, like, there's like wolves and stuff. Uh, it's it's yeah, it's just it's it's crazy, wacky fun, and it's it's nothing that I don't expect. Um, but personally, it's cookie cutter that works. I need like to add yeah. because it does get sales and it does. Oh so yeah, that's why they keep making it as a franchise. Yeah, and yeah. I think they've done really well with the Far Cry titles in particular. They've started to align them more with an early year release. So for New Dawn, um, Far Cry Five, and I think even the predecessor was Far Cry Primal, which is another really fun game yeah. actually. Very different but very fun. Um, they all came out in like the March April beginning of the year when it's generally the quiet season, and I think that's it's very rare. Like we see a, a triplet, or well, not so much now, but. They found that oh, like kind of right sweet spot for a bigger title to launch. Ubisoft seem to have a way of doing this thing. Is like, okay, here's the game. It's quite serious, like the Assassin's Creed game. Well, okay, we're going to bring out DLC or a spin-off game, and we're just going to go nuts. Like, mm. Sonic, we're going to have robot dinosaurs, like, Actually, firing lasers and shit. Like, like, let's go nuts. Not even trying to correct too much, but I think you mentioned March and April there. I actually think it's even earlier than that. I think it's sort of like the the, the mid of February because the March April is when the game season sort of really starts to pick up. If you think about when Cyberpunk was meant to come out, mm. I think it is like very early on in, in the year, which is usually described as sort of like the dead zone. It's like if your game comes out, then it's guaranteed to fail. Yeah. But like the Far Cry games, I think historically have always come out there and they've always done well. So again, props to Ubisoft. Yeah. And now we're getting them on Stadia, mm -hmm. like. You know, for the people who've missed out first time round, here's your chance. Yeah, the, here's the, your chance. They've got a really clever way of, especially with the Far Cry games, where they kind of to, to not not so much annualize them. They've got a bit of shit for it, but when they uh, they rehash the map, so like typically, so Far Cry uh, New Dawn is essentially it's the same map from Far Cry Five, but they overlay it with like a different skin almost. Mm. So Far Cry Five is more like post-apocalyptic where there's like they've added like grass and trees have overgrown stuff with like these lovely purple colorful bright plantation uh, is everywhere and it makes it look a bit different but the game again never feel i always feel a far cry map i never really know where i'm at without looking at the wider map world map anyway um i, I would personally say new dawn wasn't that great i enjoyed it but far cry 5 i'd say if you're going to choose one of the two uh five is the main the main kind of stepping stone of that franchise and I'd, I'd probably go there first uh yeah february february 2019 new dawn came out mm. um of all those games though gentlemen i have the platinum trophy on playstation in all of them that we've spoken about so far uh so i don't think i'll be jumping back into any of them with the time and yeah. cyberpunk and valhalla and everything else however as a as someone who's not played them before by all means get on those tiles there's some great great games and i can highly recommend all of them. Uh, the only one on the list that I've not, and we've not we've not touched on yet, is Ghost Recon Wildlands. It's also coming. So we've got uh, we've got what's the current Ghost Recon? I can't even think of the name. Breakpoint. Breakpoint. That's yeah. it. Yeah. We've yeah. got Breakpoint. So yeah. another Tom Clancy title. Wildlands um, takes place, and I think it, it's Colombia or somewhere, because I feel like Ubisoft got a bit of a lawsuit against them for making it making the country look bad, because uh, what possibly could go on in Colombia that? Um, yeah. That would attract negative attention. Oh, no, no, we don't talk about any of that. <laughs> we don't. That's how you get headhunted. That is. That's how you get a. Um, but that's the like you're only. You're on some sort of bounty list. <laughs> yeah, but that's that's the only franchise of all the Ubisoft titles that I was really interested in. And then when it came out, I think because it required the the team of up to four people to enjoy it to its full capacity, uh, I kind of just skipped on it. And then same with Breakpoint. It came and it went, and it had some intrigue for me. And then I just kind of ignored it. Like what? 
what's your two tick? Would you want to jump in on Stadia with me? Or is it just kind of like, yeah, it's been and gone now? I had friends who played, uh, like a group of friends who played the ever-living shit out of that game back when it came out on PS4. Mm. And I feel like, again, like I, I don't want to harp on about the fact that these are older games, but I think like particularly with a game that does require multiple people to you know to play and really enjoy mm. i feel like it may have, may have come and gone it's probably out of the entire list there the one that i'm least excited about because there are other tom clancy yeah. games that i'm way more interested in yeah this is I, not the one I, I, i'd agree with you there tom and um just to correct you chris it's in bolivia not oh, um, in colombia yeah, yeah. Um, so we'll have to correct it next week. And another South one American of the big country. problems <laughs> that I see all the time in the Facebook group is people complaining about matchmaking in, with Stadia. I, I still don't think it has that user base. Mm. So an, I, although Wildlands isn't an old title by any stretch of the imagination, it's still an old dare title. Yeah, it may suffer. And when people are having problems with current games with matchmaking, this could be another... It could actually be slightly problematic with people trying to jump in and then suddenly the narrative in the Facebook and Reddit and places <clears> like that gone. Try to play, couldn't get any matchmaking. Yeah. I mean, the great thing with these titles is you can play them with AI. It doesn't just like leave yeah. you on your yeah. own in yeah. Bolivia on with uh, with just your gun on your back and a parachute yeah. to go. You, you can use yeah. AI. I played, I yeah. think you it was... You buy the game, Tom Clancy turns up at your house, chucks you in a suitcase and ships you off to Bolivia, gives you a gun, go, go. <laughs> yeah, go, go crazy. Um, but again, more games, like I said, and hopefully just more titles. This is now pushing us on towards UPlay Plus. So we'll put a we'll put a um, a Tom Clancy ball on that one, gentlemen. We'll move on to our next story because, as we said, it's been a crazy week. So we've got tons and tons of games coming there. Um, we've got so much to talk about still. Um, let's get into what's upcoming on the horizon this week. So at the time of listening to this podcast, chances are you are currently in the middle or about to see. Uh, a new Google event kicking off, which they've they've dubbed as the uh, Stadia Good Stuff. Uh, it's going to run from good October. Stuff. Good stuff. It's going to run it's from good. October twentieth to the twenty second. So this time of this podcast, probably Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday of this week. And I personally would have thought all that Ubisoft news we just spoke about, and all the Cyberpunk day and yeah. date drop we just spoke about, would that would have been enough to to satisfy me for some time? But no, no. Stadia and the amazing team yep. over there, Chris and Grace and the wider marketing team and everyone else, have clearly got bigger plans because yeah, they dropped they dropped a tweet um, this week on the official Stadia Twitter page saying good stuff is coming. We'll be lighting up your week with three days of announcements, reveals, and other surprises. And if that wasn't enough, we'll have three games you can try right away, and it all starts October twentieth, nine a.m. Pacific time. What? What? So come on, gentlemen. Let's <laughs> let's hear those Google good stuff. Tim guesses. hats. Should we get out of hats? Let, right. Okay. <laughs> Reservations. I would say don't go too crazy. <laughs> Tom wearing an actual tin foil hat. Um, <laughs> Reservations. I think. I don't. I don't even know what to expect from this because, like I said, the news we've just <clears> gone <throat> through could have fit into these three days. Yeah, but apparently they've got it says announcements, reveals, other surprises, and three games to try. Right. Yeah. The fact that three days makes me want to go big, but I don't think it's going to be that big. It just feels like we're given three days of announcements. That's like that should could be conceivably a lot of information. Yeah. At what point does it say three days of an? Can you call it a day of announcements if it ends up being like a, a blog post or a ten minute YouTube <laughs> video? Is it should it not Strictly be like? Strictly speaking, yes. You, you could do like a, you, two YouTube videos and a blog post and different but, days. But does There's that count three as, days of yeah. announcements. But to call it days, days, days. days of announcements, and it's not really. Yeah, I'm expecting a, a blog uh, post to kickstart things on the Tuesday because we always get a blog post yeah. anyway. Well, followed with a couple of YouTube videos, maybe drop sequentially, we, bang, bang, bang on the YouTube channel. We know it's kicking off on Sage's YouTube channel. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's where it's starting. So yeah. I'm not. I'm expecting a blog post, but I don't think that'll be first. I think the blog post may be there to reiterate whatever's in that initial video or okay. live stream or whatever they've got planned. Yeah, to wrap up, essentially. So at the end, as soon yeah. as the video ends, the blog post will go live. That yeah, kind of just thing. a summary, which is um, what a blog post should be used for. Well, in, interestingly, though, because if you look at the time of it, October 20th, 9 a.m. Pacific time, which actually works at 5 p.m. UK, um, 5 p.m. is the time that they launched the blog post, so the video goes live the time that the blog should go live. So whether it drops 
in tandem whether mm -hmm. it drops one yeah. you know sequentially yeah but it is the right sort of time um my thoughts on this I, the thing i keep focusing on here is we'll have three games you can try right away try can be interpreted in different ways surely i, like, I know what is, one of them's going to be is it going to be a demo one of them's or... already been announced yes uh, immortals yes. Phoenix, phoenix rising was announced to be a demos. playable demo yes there's one so i think these are going to be demos i mean you I can wonder... try it if it's not a demo right what can you try if it's not a demo I mean, oh, you could try <laughs> the full you get the full game, game yeah, for you 24 could try the full hours. Game if you don't like it, two mm. hours refund. Yeah, <laughs> maybe it could be. Yeah, it yeah. could be like that. Like they've done some really successful free weekends. Maybe they're going to say you could try the full game right now, and we'll offer a discount on it. Who what knows? What would you do if it was Cyberpunk as one of the games you could try? The Cyberpunk demo would be, I think, bat batshit insane. Is it possible? <laughs> I think it's possible. I, I... Like, I, I honestly it's think they've, a demo. they've got it to work. So what, we're we're just short of a month out from it launching, and it's gone gold. We know yeah. the game's gone gold, so there is a yeah. build that's playable to, to a set yeah. standard done. And again, they don't need to ship the demo. They don't need to download an update. So, uh, I'm again, guessing it's just yeah. Gonna, and that, it'd be a, a vertical slice, which I imagine is easier if you don't actually have to ship the disc. Tin foil hat moment. Um, we had a tweet earlier today as well on the day of recording from the QA lead over at CD Projekt Red as well saying la that last night he managed to play Cyberpunk on his phone using Stadia. So we know it is there. We know there is a testable build <clears throat> on Stadia already. That sounds like some good stuff to me, I, Tom. I was just throwing no, out no, as no. a bit of a, a kind of half joke, but now okay. you've just convinced me. Like, tin, <laughs> like, tin foil hats on. I mean, it's possible. I mean, is it, is, it, is, it, is it even a tinfoil hat if we know we're now we know we're getting it next month like we're 30 days out from playing this game so is it that yeah. beyond belief like and to be fair Immortals like... is further out Immortals is December so we, if we get a demo for that I don't yeah. think Cyberpunk's out of the question at all now well I, I'm assuming Immortals is one of the demos because <laughs> oh, there's three demos and we know that it's going to be a playable demo can you it, imagine it just fits the, can you imagine the marketing hype if the demo an immediately playable demo is available on stadia but there is no demo available on other platforms yeah can you yeah. imagine the marketing oh, hype gonna, right there the outrage is going to be so tasty oh, <laughs> but, but even then that outrage is, should be negated by just saying yeah. you, you can play it's it on your, your existing kit yeah go on oh, stadia hey, do you have a gmail account do you have a gmail yeah, but you know account? what people are going to be like it. Yeah, people I, I will play be all my games on PlayStation. I can't believe Sadie got a demo. Sony never do exclusives. Yeah, <laughs> but this is the best thing about the demo because if it did drop and it forced people to go, well, I'm a massive fan. I want to play this game. I want to play the yeah. demo. I'm I, I'm now angry because I only have a PS4 and Xbox, right? So do it. Try it on your phone. Yeah, give, you, should, give you have it a, a go. you have a mobile, right? It's 2020. Yeah. <laughs> like if you you yeah. have an old PC, try it on that. So this is one then is like I, I'm really excited for Cyberpunk. Oh, there's a demo come out. It's only Stadia. Like I'll give Stadia a go, see what it's like. Yeah, this is what will challenge people's perceptions on Stadia and have it's... they just wrote it off because it's Stadia and because the news likes to shit on it and there's memes about it, or are they a true gamer and they just want to play the game? If that's the case, the people have only test it out. Heard negative articles about like things like latency, like like nine months ago and stuff like that, and then. Mm -hmm very little coverage since yeah yeah i think it could board really really well but uh speaking yeah. of that then what do we think the third game could be this is a bit what else um is valhalla to to i mean valhalla demo we can yeah amazing. it's weird because we don't get game demos anymore no, so it's hard no, to actually don't. like yeah. pick a game it might be outcasters uh, square That's square weird. do demos Mm, true. Outcasters would be an interesting one because it'd be a showcase of the like of a of a an exclusive game. Yeah. Because yeah. then I think that could be a good shoe in shoe in for. I we, think we it's know be something we don't know yet. Mm, we know because... models is coming. We know like Cyberpunk will be huge, but then we've also got this first party game, or well, second party, being designed exclusive for Stadia. So while you're checking out Cyberpunk, check out this other game as well and then again it just yeah. it gives it a, a, a more broader range of titles to maybe test out and try over whatever the weekend may look like what's the exclusive deal <laughs> final fantasy 7 is it timed oh because I... there isn't a demo that already exists for that game mm. Mm. 
And we know we know Square play well with Stadia. We've already got fifteen on there. A Final Fantasy Seven demo uh, as a part Richie, of the. When did Final Fantasy Seven remake come out? It was earlier this year. It's a timed exclusive for PS. It was March. March. If it's third. a one-year timed exclusive, maybe they drop a demo now, and by it, it coming the, coming March so twenty twenty-one. I'm just that's April tenth, twenty twenty-one. So yeah. it's still a, it's it's a dis, it's a time away. It's time a time away. away. Um, yes, but if you want to get people excited for it, like for next year, I don't playable. Know. All I'm Legally. thinking is that a playable demo actually does like, already exist. <laughs> mm, I don't see it. I. It would be cool. I don't, like, again, it, I, I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna say like I, I want to see more square. I want to see more Square Enix love on the system, yeah. and I'm not talking about Tomb Raider. Like, <laughs> no, I, I, no, I'm I'm deadly serious. I I, yeah. I I like the Tomb Raider games, but that's not the Square Enix that I personally enjoy, and it's not the Square Enix that I yes, digest. Yeah. I want like, Bravely Default. I, I want I, things yeah, like um, I want their JRPG Octopath. <laughs> I want the the full Final Fantasy collection. Mm. Right. So swinging things back around then to the good stuff, Kumna writes Ooh. in with a question from our Patreon page, just like you can, patreon.com forward slash Sounds of Stadia. Give us your thoughts, ideas, questions, and any curiosities you may have. And his thoughts on the good stuff are, uh, he says he writes in and says, I don't think uh, it'll be about games, otherwise they would have held Cyberpunk and the Ubisoft game announcements until then. Very good point. Uh, I'm hoping this is more of a features service event, releasing or announcing dates for things like crowdplay, YouTube streaming, or family sharing. Maybe dates for Uplay Plus as well as new publishers. Does EA still count as a new publisher? Because we've not seen anything from them just yet. Uh, they're still really hyping next week, even after this week, so they must be excited themselves. Um, maybe a couple of indie announcements, as we have had a few ESRB ratings recently also. So great points there, Kumna. Gentlemen, um, aside from the cyber, cyber, little, little bit, Cyberpunk and Ubisoft stuff, obviously they are still hyping this up, even after the fact of all that megaton news that dropped. Um, what do we think in terms of it being a service-based um, couple of days? So here's a feature day one, day two's family sharing, day three's the UI interface update. Service-based exclusively, I think will be quite a bit dry, dry in terms of the content. And I don't think you'd hype it this far for something mm -hmm. like that. I think it's got to be balanced, a mixture of games. and um... yeah, You would almost want it the other way around. Yeah. You would get the good stuff would have been Cyberpunk and I... Ubisoft, and last week would have been a blog post about family sharing and I agree support. with Kumna to an extent. I want to hear about the, these features that we know are coming, that we don't have full dates on stuff. I want to hear about when they're coming, what's the status and all that sort of stuff. But I'm pretty nerdy in terms of stadia content. <laughs> it's like I I'm interested in that side of it. Most people I think are just purely interested in the game yeah. side of it. You're absolutely right there. So one thing I was thinking about here, he mentions Uplay Plus and possibly new publishers. Um, does EA still count? There was a little bit of news this past week as well that you can now link your Stadia account to an EA Play account as well. So we know EA Play is gonna be their essential like streaming service as well for that their, their their own games and their own tiles and so on so it'd be quite nice to be able to get full support from ea i know we've been harping on about it for a while ea still haven't given us dates for those games that they said were coming and we we're running that. out of yet what was the five games by the we end of the year we're currently on zero and yeah. we're running out of yet <laughs> we're running out of yeah <laughs> rapidly you are right we are almost on the cusp of november so um and if, yeah they're, they're going to want to get them out again i still hold hope we're going to get some kind of jedi fallen order game of the year edition Maybe. i really really do to help drive home that get EA could if jedi fall now it could be a game of the air contender this year not that cyberpunk the last of us and ghost of tsushima or anything like that are going to possibly fight it for that contention uh <laughs> but i'm gonna go i, I want to throw another tinfoil hat real quick though um, put, put your hat back on before you say it yeah. you can't say it without wearing the hat <laughs> there yeah, it is that's all right <laughs> so um people were saying that if you look at the actual little animation they've put on there, you've got good stuff written with like neon <laughs> lights, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> here we go. Right. So replicating neon is actually a huge feature of ray tracing. <laughs> All right. Is yeah. that a stretch? Tom, that's not a tinfoil hat. That's like a full jacket, suit, waistcoat, and, sh and trousers. <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I don't think it's that much of a stretch, to be honest, because all the hard lifting, heavy lifting, is done on the server end. Yeah, but so it's I think it just looks is... cool. <laughs> That's why. Oh yeah, I mean that's a stretch. But ray tracing <laughs> from the stadia, I don't. All right, think okay, it. yeah. 
I mean, right. And that would be definitely okay. in the category of good stuff. Like, oh yeah, let's, by the let's way, be real. Let's be we've real. now got ray tracing. Let's be real. Let's... Yeah. yeah, you're absolutely right. Let's just temper expectations though, okay? Yeah. Because if we if we start like I could tinfoil hat way 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 too deep into this sort of stuff, but I'm just gonna I, I'm gonna bring it in. I'm not it sure in. if it's that much of a stretch considering we're go now that need to be positioning himself to go up against PS5 and Xbox um, Series X. It seems mm. like the right sort of time. Like we talked about in the last episode, I think when or no, sorry, it was the post show before. When does the next connect need to happen? The and I'm pretty Gen sure we said Sega. by the end of by the end of October, right? Yeah. So this, this sort yeah. of feels about the right sort of time. I mean, yeah, they could open up day one and say, here's a little announcement, here's a three demos to play, check back tomorrow at the same time, 9am, yeah. and we'll have a connect. And then day three, uh, round out with a few feature updates, maybe? Like, there's got to be was, something over three days to make it worthwhile. Yeah, I was quietly quite proud of myself because I, I predicted that there's a, a small window after the, like, the announcements of like the, the launch dates for the like, Sony Microsoft consoles and before they actually come out, there's a nice little window in there that Google could take over the narrative. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah, this right. came out in, right in the middle of that window. I was like, yes, I call it. Yeah, and I, <laughs> I have to say, go on. Oh, sorry, I was going to. Uh, I was going to say. I will point out as well. We we probably won't have time to delve as much as we want into it because the the, the news has been so crazy this week. But there was the founders hub. Uh, Ask me anything with Chris and Grace from Google this week, and it, there wasn't many details to find out. Because it was hamstrung with the caveated rule of you can't ask any questions about the future of Stadia or the roadmap <laughs> of Stadia or games coming to Stadia. So the questions were kind of kind of tied with their hands behind the back to some degree um, but Grace did come out this week and mention that as for Stadia's anniversary stay tuned so they are aware of something for their first anniversary they're going to do something so yeah back to what I just, you're saying Tom yeah I was going to say I just hope with three days on the line like you said before it, is it just going to be a 10 minute video on a blog post because I hope with three days I hope they don't like you said before Chris about like big announcements and so on then round it out with features and stuff I sort of want to see the opposite of that. I want, I don't want them to, for lack of a better way of putting it, I don't want them to shoot their load too soon, basically. <laughs> well, I think I, I want to see it sort of hype and build up. I'd like to see it sort of like as a crescendo for the final date, the third day. So the Thursday should be like the, bam, here's the huge stuff that you've really been waiting for. Whereas the, the Tuesday could be like, let's roll it out just a little bit. Let's just build up the hype. And then boom. <laughs> If you're you talking to like That's a traditional treat, right? like press conference, you kind of want to come out the gate with a big. He's a big thing to get you excited going in. You want to end with a nut that one more thing, um, mm -hmm. and then in the middle, you kind of want to constantly be changing up like the pacing of it. So sometimes he's a gate. He he's a deep dive in the game. He's a bit of a sizzle reel, a handful of games. He's some techie stuff. So, so I think Tuesday could be that middle section. Uh, so Wednesday, just as a treat sorry. for Richie, we want to see that they have the announcements brilliant stuff they sort of level it out in the middle and then at the end yeah. here's one more thing Start richie wants time. to hear and i'm confirming it right now richie you want to see a black screen Whee! the three lights of stadia <laughs> have purchased the rights to splinter cell <laughs> no that, i mean it's that would do it you're on stadia <laughs> no now you get right okay put your tinfoil well, yeah. gear away gentlemen yeah. you're getting a bit carried away now but uh, oh, i'm just messing uh, uh, we'll look forward to it we will be covering of course the the stadia good stuff uh, content as and when it drops unfortunately we don't really know what it looks like so we may be around for a live stream but uh, keep it keep subscribed keep it locked follow us on twitter and all of our social feeds uh so you are informed of when and what we are covering when it happens but more importantly as we head into this week um, I'm just excited. I'm looking forward to seeing what news and stories. Will I be playing Jedi Fallen Order by the end of the week instantly? Will I have a demo for Cyberpunk to play by the end of the week? Imagine following up that launch announcement with you can play it several days later. That's some good stuff right there. So um, it is a busy week and it's going to be a busy episode as well because we've got a lot more stuff to cover, gentlemen. So strap in, strap in. Um, off what you were just saying there about marketing, I think we, we definitely need to touch on Something's happened over at Stadia HQ, and this week, uh, Grace and Chris, as part of the AMA session in the forum, they did mention that they are part. They are the only two people part of the community Stadia team. Uh, Grace, funnily enough, is actually the community manager for Chromecast as well, so she's dual sighting on different jobs there, picking up those two different paychecks to fund our Liverpool obsession. And uh, yeah, over on the Chromecast with the Chromecast TV, which we know is getting Stadia early 2021, first half, but. 
In terms of the marketing, they did say there's a whole separate team which deals with stadium marketing. I think you mentioned it last week, Tom. It, has something just changed all of a sudden? Because their, their social output, their online ads, they've ramped it up. So we've got two videos to start off with. One, um, they initially kicked things off with a, an advert which is called Getting to Know Stadia. Um, which starts with actually the Google search engine and someone types in what is Stadia and then they go off into like a breakdown of it's just games, there's no downloads, there's no update, play with your tech. Uh, Tom, what, what do you think of this switch up in marketing presence and the direct messaging they're really getting out there now? I think it's definitely marketing that should have existed at the start of last year, to be honest with you, but this is this is on point. This is the counter... This is my, In my opinion, this is the counter-marketing to... Amazon Luna's initial release and mm -hmm. their, their their sort of like take on how to approach it. Um, I think people have been listening to Sounds of Stadia podcast, the Sounds of Stadia podcast, <laughs> yeah. and um, several other podcasts out there, and also in general, like without trying to put a label on it, I think um, feedback has been given and feedback has been taken. Sorry, and there has been some sort of communication it's clear like that is a bloody good advert yeah the, the, i can't the original one with that that guy that looks like, like a sega advert we, from the 90s we, mm. yeah i don't even know what the point was it was just trying to be so quirky and it just didn't work yeah. but this is this is clear it is very to the point and in my opinion it generates some hype about it like it yeah. does say like boom here you go your favorite games yeah, it almost Word. replicated yeah. what the um, what the lunar initial launch advert did, which was just trying to showcase how seamless you can jump from device to device to device with some very clever cutscenes of there's a there's a PC, there's a tablet, there's your phone, there's yeah. a laptop, bounce, 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 and then now we're at a point where the the trailers I think can really start to showcase like current games, especially. It, it does lend really well to the narrative, but they went into using controllers. They showcased different controllers. They they re they reaffirmed that no downloads, no updates, no installs. And I think when that message starts to really land with people, that's when they're like, oh, so that, it's not just Netflix of gaming. It's something bigger than that. And they did keep the pro subscription stuff separate. They showcased YouTube integration a little bit more. And I think, again, now the narrative's changing towards bigger titles and they, they're hitting the ground with these ads. It's simple to the message, and yeah, we've been saying for months now that the marketing just isn't up to snuff with what the, the actual product is, and I'm so happy to just finally see. It seems like something's shifted. There's been a dynamic shift, and they get it. They get how to market the product now. Well, I think over the last year, they've got a huge amount of data, and marketing's been one of the most talked about, most critical points. Like The marketing, quite frankly, has been crap for the, for the large mm. part. Thank like, you. Yeah. So when people have been critical of it, we've been critical because we like the platform. We want to see it do well. I touched on earlier, still hearing a lot of people having problems with matchmaking. That mm -hmm. comes down to not enough people on the platform. So we want more people on the platform. So we want them to get the marketing right. Yeah, there's sure. a lot lot to be yeah. said for it. Um, they also did follow up with a second ad, which is the What It, what it Takes ad. And that, that kickstarts with Cyberpunk. And then it just goes into this crazy powerhouse of showing all the big titles. It shows off Jedi Fallen Order. It shows um, Cyberpunk. Uh, and more importantly, uh, it shows people playing the games. It's crazy what it goes through. Um, Immortals, Phoenix Rising, Far Cry 6, the Hitman 3, all these big titles that are coming up that PlayStation, Xbox and PC are going to be pushing themselves you can play it on Stadia with the existing kit. And uh, yep. this is what leads me to th back into our previous topic about the good stuff. They showcased a lot of games in this ad that are not out yet. Now, I don't know how, how I feel about showcasing stuff that's not available yet. Like, how much of advertising is far that far unknown in the future that you can actually use it as part of your marketing, which is what leads me to think that the good stuff could quite actually be a lot of stuff we're seeing here in these ads. Yeah. I think it's fine if you've got dates on it. But we don't. <laughs> yeah. No. It's again, Jedi, it's Jedi Fallen Order. Order. Yeah. We want it. We want it. We want it. Give it to us. Give it to me now. <laughs> it's okay, Tom. It's coming. It's soon. coming soon. Hashtag. <laughs> Mark. But uh, yeah, like you said, Tom, you're showcasing Star Wars. We know how big of a brand Star Wars is. Showing that's available. And then my worry would be someone would see that advert go, oh, apparently it's instant. Stadia.com. Click. I, I can't find it. Scroll, scroll. Where's Jedi Fallen Order? Scroll, scroll. Where's uh, where's that? Obviously, Cyberpunk's not out yet, but if you get what I mean, so there could be a kind of a like mini 
negative impact from that where someone does yeah. go to check it out and go, oh, I was lied to. Never mind. I didn't buy any console, so I've not lost any money. I'm out. I think we might be a little overcritical there because even like things like the PlayStation, Sony, and Nintendo marketing kind of does the same thing. But do they it not have games that already there? Not on everything. You always do see games that have been announced, but that are just like kind of in the coming soon win- win- window. I'd say PlayStation and Xbox, everything they put on a YouTube ad or a market has a date. Like you never see an advert that says coming Christmas, do you? I mean, probably they probably do. Again, yeah. we're getting into the weeds of it all now. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But back to the the kind of the good stuff. Um, that that particular advert, what it takes, leads us into our next topic, and that is uh, Waka Waka, gentlemen. Did we see a, a sneaky little Pac Man in that advert there? Are we our friends? Did. Are our we friends did. over at Bandai Namco about to drop it? And then even the the official Twitter account. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> followed it up with "We see you, Stadia," and then that sideways eye emoji. Um, Gentlemen, any guesses at what Pac-Man game we're getting? Is it a new one? Is it an old one? Is Pac-Man even really changed in the last three decades? Well, looking at the very, very screenshot brief image, yeah, <laughs> yeah, brief screenshot, it looks like it's a classic Pac-Man board, but it seems to be linking to other classic Pac-Man boards. Yeah, oh. it's 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 a it's it's going to be their version of Super Bomberman Bomberman R Online. It's going to be a Pac-Man Battle Royale. That makes it's sense. That. Yeah. Send ghosts yeah, we, to the other guys. You, you collect your pellets, you get the ghosts, send the ghosts to other screens. Absolutely. Last one standing. I mean... Waka waka. I, like most people, I have a, I'm have a fan of Pac-Man. I remember playing it in the arcade back in the day. I remember having it on my Game Boy. Um, the, the fun usually runs out quite quick for me. Once I start to hit that like difficulty cap, it's just the same stuff repeated over and over again. I'm terrible at it. <laughs> and if anyone's not checked out that high score on Netflix yet... Uh, they they spend an whole episode saying about Pac-Man when it was in the arcades. Everybody loved it, and especially Miss Pac-Man. But then they saw the tail off of people playing the game once it hit a difficulty spike, or people had they understood the rhythm, the routine, and they could just basically complete it. Uh, and that's when the the guys went out and made like separate chip boards and sold them on the black market, essentially to upgrade Pac-Man, it. Yeah. Ha- Pac-Man, and they upgraded it to a whole new level with new games and features. Um, which <laughs> then they went to court over and all that kind of stuff, but. Yeah, I think we could get a battle royale game. It, interest, it's so interesting that it leaked on a Stadia. Like, is this an only on Stadia kind of deal? Like, did they not vet that advert and go, you know, Pac-Man's in this ad and it's it's not out or announced well, yet? The Pac-Man official Twitter responded saying, "We see you at Google Stadia," so this is planned. You think? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Oh, it's, absolutely. It's it's outright. It's outright. It's just a market employee. This is. It's just. It's it's. It was meant to be an Easter egg, but we clocked it. And they acknowledge it. I, that's what I think it is. I think I don't. I don't. It's great. It's. I think it's, it's as an Easter egg. I think it's one of them. The put out there. Let's see who notices this sort of thing. Yeah. People. People are going to notice it, and the people are going to talk about. It, and then, yeah, probably next week we might get the announcement regarding it. Hmm. Oh well, Pac Man, uh, coming guaranteed to Stadia now. I'd like to see it be an exclusive or a time exclusive, similar to Bomberman R Online, where yeah. it's just yeah, Stadia's there. Try it, play it, get crazy with it. Waka waka, all that kind of stuff. I kind of like seeing these older games get a new breath of life by changing up the format and how they play. Like, they did, we've had, we had like Tetris 99, we've now got Bomberman, Pac Man's coming in some way, shape, or form. Yeah, classic retro point based high score games lend themselves quite yeah. well to, I think, a battle royale st- without being your typical PUBG yeah. battle royale. I think just versing other people at the exact same time does add a, a fun, different element to it. We're just waiting for asteroids now or Snake. <laughs> yeah, certainly. <laughs> Maybe that's Worm Game. Maybe that's oh, the worm yeah. game. Oh my god, I forgot about worm Battle game. Battle Royale worm game. That's, that's what it. we should have asked in the AMA. Where's worm game? Yeah, where's worm game? <laughs> that's that's oh, the good we stuff. The treat. Jen, that's the good stuff. Yeah. They announced worm game as a free to try game on the Tuesday. <laughs> worm game, DLC, roadmap, season pass announced the, the second day. And then the third day is a sequel announced to worm game, <laughs> which is worm game 2 coming to Stadia <laughs> in the future. Yeah. That's, what Sha- that's what Shannon Stud still is working on. That is a triple A title. It's Worm Game. Fantastic. Um, from Stadia. Um, but aside from Pac Man, uh, we actually did get an announcement uh, as a Ubisoft press release. Uh, we're getting Family Feud on Stadia as well, part of the Hasbro Ubisoft acquirement that happened. Uh, also in the UK, known as Family Fortune. So our survey says we're getting this on Stadia. Um, <laughs> this doesn't interest me at all. It's just a daft nope. family game. Uh, I haven't watched Family Fortunes or Feud in a long, long time. I think I see a couple of memes about the American one from time to time, just because the um, who's the host of the American one? 
I forget his name. Is it? Ha- yeah. Not. I want to say Harvey, but is it Harvey? Either way, he's the guy who messed up on the Miss America thing and he awarded the winner to the wrong person and then had to backtrack and give it to the second runner-up. Steve Harvey. Steve Harvey. That's, oh, well, I got half of his name right. Um, <laughs> although it doesn't look like Steve Harvey is the host in the screenshot that we've been given for the game. So he's Generic been replaced. Host. Generic host 101. See- Chris, you might not be interested in this, but these are the kind of games that I like to sit down in a holiday or, or so on with my mm. family and just like whack it on the TV and we pass the controller around. We have a bit of a laugh. This is the kind of thing I do want to see on Stadia personally. Um, it's not for everyone. I get it. Like these family party games and so on. And they usually do charge a, a decent whack yeah. for something like this. But I'd like to see this was a game like this. Almost like um, Sony's Play Link so everyone can just pull out the phone out the pocket. Yeah. Rather than connecting controllers. Well, that's, that's what that I thought was... about the Jackbox series of games as well. Yeah. But um, we did have a confirmation quite some time ago saying that Jackbox wouldn't be coming to Stadia, um, which is unfortunate because I think it would be excellent once again. Yeah. Hey, Even something like Monopoly, being able to just control through your phone rather than have to pass a controller around would be make that game a little bit more seamless. Yeah, it's a lot of family games, so I think it just needs yeah. to be optimised for Stadia maybe a little bit more because um, you've got your touchscreen, you've got your phone, but then we need family yeah. share realistically as well for this to be a thing. And can you send a, can you send a click to play link to someone who doesn't have a Stadia mm. app and still just boot it up in maybe like a Chrome browser to play along? as like a guest account maybe. Yeah. Something they'll probably no doubt look at, but yeah, our survey says we'll be getting this game on Stadia soon. Uh, my guess is every kind of Hasbro Ubisoft acquirement will just move over gradually. We've got Uno now, we've got um, we've got Monopoly. I'm trying to think what other games the Ubisoft really de- de- dabble in. Board games, Risk. I don't know. I Risk. Of Risk's a good one. Yeah. I had Risk on PlayStation <laughs> Three. That was interesting. Worm. We've got Worms coming soon, hopefully as well. Not not that, not that it's the same, but Team Seventeen, get it out. Uh, speaking of games uh, with updates, uh, we got a final uh, October update from uh, Square Enix. Tom used to talk uh, very highly about one some Square Enix games. We've got Marvel's Avengers with some uh, updated features. Uh, Richie, you'll be happy to hear they are integrating a ping system into it soon. Uh, okay. They are also allowing us as part of the next update to uh, play through your campaign once again with your superheroes level and higher gear intact so you don't have to reset to Square One. Um, different things with visibility, high, on, high contact mode, um, being able to see heroes in multiplayer. I know sometimes we've lost each other a couple of times where we've just been over the other end of the map and we have no clue where we're at for reference points. Um, some more mission clarity regarding rewards at the war table. So it's going to be clearer what missions give you what and what gear you get from certain parts. Um, and in terms of future content, they have delayed the Kate Bishop operation. Uh, outside of October, so probably just mid-November, late November, maybe sometime. They clearly need a bit more time to polish that off, which then ties into future Hawkeye content. So again, I think everything's just been knocked on the pipeline a bit. But they have came out and also said that the next-gen version of Avengers, so PS5 and Xbox Series X, is going to be pushed back into 2021. So again, playing on Stadia, that's great, because we just don't have to worry about the update. We'll just get it when it comes. Um, and as a sign of appreciation, they've also came out and they're going to give you a ton of credits, units, upgrade modules, DNA keys, all of the kind of grindy loot stuff you look for in that game uh, as a thank you for everyone. Although, yay. Sorry? Yay. So yay. Yay. Um, um, aside from all stuff. that, I jumped in last night and there is another hub. There is a shield base now open um, where you can go to and Maria Hill is there. And aside from, you know, Richie, I think our bugbear, I don't know about you, Tom, so far has been to get your daily missions, you need to go to the Ant Hill speak to that woman yeah. then you need to go to the helicarrier go up to the second floor speak to that woman yeah. if yeah. you now go to the outpost the shield outpost there is little computers where you can actually just log in and you can tick off all the daily missions from one outpost rather than Good. bounce, bounce from each one yeah. um again it's a game's a service they're going to constantly add stuff it's a bit disappointing the storyline stuff isn't coming a little bit later but i'm just grinding away benefits of stadia like i said last week i just jump on chip away for an hour or so get my gear yeah. get my loot Go. All this stuff is good, but hasn't addressed my main my major issue with the game is I don't really get the purpose of just grinding out my character levels or anything. It doesn't feel like it's adding any more content. All it does seems to do is I'm playing through the same handful of maps, slightly rearranged through the same sort of tasks with high level enemies. So I've yeah. kind of just but, I mean that is the end game. The game. That's the end game for most well, things like Destiny and stuff. It's in division. It's not like one... really. I think that's a bit unfair because things like Destiny have things like actual raids where you have to plan and you build a team to go 
But, but at the end of the it's day, you are still just hitting generic. different enemies, right? It's just it's just called a raid, and it's got a time frame and a big boss. Yeah, like it's I don't still, know. I just it's think still the same. I would need say anyway. to do. They need to add some more. Well, that's the content, right? That's the Kate Bishop, the Hawkeye. That's yeah. like your sequential story stuff. And then we know there's new maps coming. Yeah. We've got a new outpost this week. Um, I just think, like, as the games are set, now the campaign's done. The reality is that is the game. It's it's grinding to get to that level cap and getting the best loot and equipping your hero to the highest ability to jump in with your friend. I don't think there's much more game aside from that afterwards. But it, depending on what you're looking for in it, like me playing an hour or so every night, that's kind of like it, it's 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 scratching that itch. What about you, Tom? Are you still playing? A little bit. I need to sit down. I want to play some with um, with Holly because she she's bought the game but hasn't had too much of a chance to play through it. Um, the issue we've got is loading up two instances of Stadia here at the moment doesn't quite work for us. That bad internet. I suppose I could play. I could play it on my mobile. Have you got no internet, Tom? Is that what you're saying? Richie, wink, oh. wink. Oh. Hey. <laughs> so for uh, audio listeners, you need to go check it out. Yeah, so as a point, Richie said at pre-show before we start recording this, should I just start the show by revealing my t-shirt? Here we are, one hour 16 into it, and he's not revealed his t-shirt Wait, yet. That hasn't been a good segue. <laughs> well, there you go then. No internet, unfortunately, stops all instances of Stadia play. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's great to see that's a spawning. I think it's going to be an evergreen title. The reality is my interest in Avengers is going to waver once Cyberpunk and all Valhalla and all these big cats come up, but I'm hoping... The story content they are going to drip feed us over the course of next year. Like, inevitably, next spring when they go, Wakanda Outpost, Wakanda Levels, Black Panther's available now, or we've got Falcon Winter Soldier tying in with the maybe Disney Plus series dropping. Um, anything like that. I think that that is the stuff that's going to get me back in and go, you know what, I'll give it a go. Um, but we'll see. Time will tell. Time will tell. Doctor Strange, time will tell. Using the Time Stone. What does he do? What's that hand thing he does? Is it that? <laughs> Whatever that is. Anyway, uh, it's been a busy week of crazy stadium news. Um, a few little touch points we will mention before we wrap up. Uh, Chris Tales has been delivered. I'm sorry, my namesake game. I'm working on it. It's only me, independent studio and all that. Uh, it's been delayed, pushed back till early 2021. So we'll see it on Stadia eventually. But I don't really mind because the bevy of games we are honestly getting now, I think anything... That's probably thinking about launching by the end of this year. You might want to just take a step back into January, February time when it is a bit quieter. Especially if you're not a triple A AAA massive game. Just yeah, just step aside. Let, let the let the freight train roll on through. That is Cyberpunk and Assassin's Creed and FIFA and everything. Where's FIFA? That's some good stuff I'd like it's to see true. this week. Very true. Um a couple of things there. Tom, I'll throw it over to you. Borderlands three is getting a season pass too, so it looks like they are going to continue supporting Borderlands three for the foreseeable with another second year of content does this tickle you in any way shape or form or are you kind of like have you moved on a bit now from borderlands to be honest with you the fact that they're adding new skill trees is kind of nice because i think the one thing that's made borderlands quite stale is lack of new characters or lack of um lack of new content like yes okay they're adding new story content but the the dlc stuff usually is relatively short-lived and it doesn't add too Mm. much longevity um so that's decent i i really would like and they've never done it for another borderlands game before but i'd really like to see them add a new character like as a playable character Mm. i think that would be pretty cool because again we've talked about in the past before that borderlands 3 is sort of like lost its touch because the characters are kind of forgettable in my opinion compared to historic so i'm i'm undecided at this point as to whether I'm going to get the pass. Hmm. Interesting. And uh, final point then, Dead by Daylight, final story of the week, has now cross-progression with PC. So we knew this was coming. Steam plays. Um, you can now save across both platforms, which I saw some people on, on the internet bemoaning the fact that PS4 and Xbox didn't have it, and it's like, okay, go for it. Like, unlucky. Yeah. Like, I don't know what Too more bad. to say to that. Too bad, but... son. Dead by Daylight. We're going to be doing some of that for Halloween, right? Absolutely. Without a doubt. Because Halloween is so close. So near yet so far. Spooky, spooky time. Um, But like all things in the world of Halloween, um, they have to die. Just like this podcast episode. (laughs) Just a a morbid end on it there. Uh, (laughs) 
That's Thank it for the been. news this week. Uh, it's been a crazy, crazy busy week. Thank you for tuning in to episode 56 of the Sounds of Stadia podcast. Uh, remember, if you like the show, give us a like down below. If you don't like the show, give us a like anyway. Why not? It's only YouTube. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you are kept in the loop with all of our new stories. And more importantly, any of the good stuff that we are bringing you this week alongside the Stadia good stuff. Myself, Chris, Tom and Richie will also be bringing you some kind of content, no doubt. And stop by on Thursday as well where we do a weekly community stream. Don't know what it might be yet, depending on Tuesday's announcement. It could be a yeah. fun new game, it could be Avengers, it could be anything. Let us know, right into demo. us. Tell us what it could be a demo. Could be a demo. Uh, it could be FIFA. Could be, could be. Um, but thank you everyone for your support as always don't forget if you want to write into the show support us a little bit further head over to patreon.com forward slash sounds of stadia for as little as 79 pence or one dollar you can write into the show with your questions chat to us over on discord and play with us as well in the future as part of our community streams thank you to everyone watching so far my name's been chris i'm very impressed that we managed to get through all of this today i'm richie <laughs> and we've been sounds of stadia have a great week and enjoy the good stuff, and we'll see you soon. Bye. 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 The good shit.